In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion for Christchurch Streatham. My name's Jonathan Croucher. I'm the Area Dean of South Lambeth and the Vicar of Christchurch Gypsy Hill, where this service is being recorded for you. We will be following the order for ordinary time that I hope will be familiar to you at Christchurch. And please do join in with the responses and we will be using the lectionary readings for this Sunday, July the 12th. So let us pray. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city, on our city. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the Fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, reading verses 10 to 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. 
it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we say Psalm 65 together, reading verses 1 to 13. Psalm 65, verses 1 to 13. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you establish the mountains, you are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its riches, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty, your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow, the hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks, the valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Our epistle this morning is Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit. 
that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Hear the words of the Gospel of St. Matthew. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those words of the parable of the sower are, I imagine, very familiar to each one of us. And unlike many of the parables of Jesus, they come with the maker's explanation. We don't have to dig around too far to grasp the meaning of that wonderful agricultural imagery that Jesus uses that must have resonated so well with his listeners. I have tried this year to plant some bee-friendly seeds. I came to it rather late, having given up on trying to grow strawberries, which seem just every year as they grow to ripeness to be demolished by birds and I think more likely by squirrels. So this year I removed the strawberries and threw down some bee-friendly seeds. Those seeds have had to contend not just with rather poor soil, but with my sons becoming rather enthusiastic with recovering their football claiming not to see those small seeds growing up through the earth. But I can see that as I threw those seeds around a small patch of grass, that some did indeed fall on stones, some fell in the cracks between stones. Some of them have blown or been planted by birds in some pots that sat nearby. And I can see, just as in Jesus' parable, seeds that have grown and wilted, I can see seeds that have grown under the shade of other plants that are not really flourishing and surely will never 
bear the flowers that they were created to bear. I can see those shoots that began to grow that have been trampled and have never yet quite recovered, just as in the parable. There are those that grow, that are ready to flourish, and yet are strangled by seeds. And I can see now, in the midst of the best soil that I can provide them, those that are growing with solid stems, with beautiful rich leaves, and which I pray will bear the flowers that will bless us as we pass them by, and will, I hope, be the great draw to the bees and the butterflies that they are there for. I wonder how you feel about your heart this morning. How is the seed of the word of God flourishing in your own life? How do you need to nourish that seed in order that it might grow and bear fruit? For many of us, this time of separation from church has taken from us much of the nourishment that we gain in our faith by being together, by sharing in the holy mysteries of the Eucharist, by being encouraged, by seeing one another, by engaging and embracing with one another. All those things that this pandemic has taken away from us. And yet we long, don't we, to be people who are born of the Spirit, who are bearing the fruit that Christ promises will be the works of those who follow him. We must work hard, just as I must, in nourishing my garden, in watering in the dry times, in removing those weeds that grow between them and seek so quickly to overcome them. If we want to bear fruit, we need to seek the word of the Lord. We need to offer ourselves to receive afresh his spirit. And as we look forward to being able to gather again in the not too distant future in church, to hear and receive his word together, to break bread and share wine, as we receive the mystery of God's presence with us in the Eucharist. Let us pray that God will use us to bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold in order that the world might see and know the love of God, the coming of his kingdom and experience something of his grace that draws us into his presence day by day. Amen. Let's be quiet for a moment as we reflect on God's word to us this morning. We join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to our Heavenly Father. When I use the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for our church community. Here at Christ Church, Streatham, separated physically, but united in love. Strengthen and guide us, we pray. Help us to support and pray for each other, that the light of Christ may continue to light our path and draw us ever closer to you. As we look forward to a time when we can come together again for worship, may we continue to be mindful of the needs of others, caring, respectful and wise. May we continue to hold in our hearts and lift to you Christians around the world for whom public worship is not possible or is not without danger. We give thanks for our church wardens here at Christchurch. We pray for our new incumbent, for his family, as they prepare for the licensing in September. We ask you, Lord, to bless them in their service. For all who lead and minister in your church, may they speak words of wisdom, have a heart for your people, and work together to unite your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, give skill, sympathy, wisdom and resilience to all who are caring for the sick during this pandemic. We continue to pray for all frontline workers, our emergency services, doctors, nurses, carers and other key workers, that they may know your peace and love. We pray that you might strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health. We pray for those working hard to find a cure to this disease, that you may give them wisdom and inventiveness. Strengthen their resolve, bless their work, and move mountains to progress their research. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace be with those who are fearful, with those who mourn, with those struggling to make sense of the world in the current pandemic. We pray for those in our church family and those known to us personally who are sick or unwell, anxious or stressed, sad or lonely, or who are struggling with loss and bereavement. We ask, Lord, for your comfort, for an awareness of your presence. We pray that you would give them courage to face each new day and fill them with hope for the future. In a moment of silence, let us bring before the Lord those on our hearts this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus stood among his disciples and said, My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, do not be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you'd like to greet those around you, call out of the window 
message, if you can, online to share that promise of Christ's presence and peace with each one of us. With the new regulations on uh, communion and worship together, we keep the hosts covered uh, during the prayer of consecration. Uh, and uh, I will uncover it at the point of distribution. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Almighty God, who has taught us through thy Son that love is the fulfilling of the law, grant that we may love thee with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So we come to our time of final blessing. The Lord be with you and also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.